So on the menu today, we got ourselves a salmon tartare with a sweet red onion creme fraiche, and we're gonna add that into our homemade cornets. That's what we're gonna do. And uh, well, don't click away, it's still me, I promise. Welcome back to Jamie and Chef. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. Here we are, episode four, featuring Thomas Keller and the French Laundry Cookbook. Recipes from TK's Restaurant of the same name. So really good name for a cookbook. And it has delivered in giving me around two or three different paper cuts in the last few minutes. So yeah, it stings, but we got to persevere. Uh, tough as nails over here, so let's just keep going. So we're gonna make another one of his uh, well-known dishes today. <sighs> These cornets, salmon tartare with a sweet red onion creme fraiche. Uh, one of my favorite dishes to serve to large groups of people, says TK, not me. It's fun to look at, it's distinctive, delicious, doesn't require a plate or silverware. You can eat it standing up with a glass of champagne or with wine in one hand. There they are right there. That's what we're gonna make, the cornets. So that's what I'm aiming for. Those look beautiful. And if I just give this one page flip here, there's the finished dish. So, you know, man can dream. Also, if you're curious about the extra oyster knife that I mentioned I was gonna give away to someone uh, in episode one, if you want this, uh, then stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna pick someone at random. But stay for the cornets. So. so this is my first attempt. I would say it's pretty, uh, it's not great. It's all pitiful, really. Uh, it's a complete mess, but I must say that I've learned a lot in the last half an hour or so about how to make cornets. So freaking hot. So everything that looks terrible here will not be replicated on the second attempt. And uh, yeah, I don't even wanna to explain to you what just took place. All I can say is that I failed. <laughs> this isn't terrible. What, I add like a cup of salt in there or something? Holy shit. it says a teaspoon of salt. What did I add? What did I add? Let's check the footage on that. Tablespoon of salt. Yeah, what I gotta do is <laughs> I gotta make the cornets. So we're gonna start right at the beginning again. Medium sized bowl. Thank you. So this is a quarter cup plus three tablespoons of all purpose flour, a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of sugar. Here, I need, I need witnesses. Uh, a teaspoon, that is a teaspoon. Look, teaspoon of salt. Give that a quick mix. Then what do I need? Another one, ooh, eight tablespoons, four ounces of softened butter, but it's still cold to touch. He wants me to whisk it, but all the butter just gets stuck in the middle of the whisk. So I figure if I just kind of just go to town with a wooden spoon, how about that? I gotta turn this into mayonnaise or a mayo, <laughs> a mayo-like consistency. I feel confident enough to bring over the whisk now. Nope, it still did of that. Stupid butter. Okay, uh, why did I do that? I knew I should. So I'm gonna bring over the dry ingredients. I'm gonna go to the fridge and I got chilled egg whites from two eggs into the dry mix. Charlie Brown, mix it until it's completely incorporated and smooth. Add in the butter mayonnaise. Okay, so I was supposed to add the butter by thirds into this thing. And I did that the first attempt, but I just completely forgot the second attempt, so. Uh, well, I think it's gonna be fine. So whisk it until the batter is creamy without any lumps. Transfer the batter to a smaller container so that it will be easier to work with. We got one half of this deli container, right? Well, where's the lid? Just using that as a segue to show you what I did with the lid. Cut to it. Four inch stencil made out of deli lid. And I must say, I took the minimal approach here. Look at that, I even got a little bit of a handle there. So I can grab it when I need to lift it. So that was pretty neat, eh? Well, now I got the stencil on top of a baking mat on top of my baking tray. I'm gonna get some batter onto the bottom of an offset spatula. 
I hope everyone's okay. Okay, holding the stencil flat, let's go with an even layer. And the thickness is the same as the stencil. Cool, no holes, no holes. Uh, that looks great. And let's remove the stencil. Oh yeah. Scrape off the excess batter, stencil back down one and a half inches apart. And even layer batter on top of the stencil. Smooth it out. I'm going as thick or as thin as that stencil. That looks beautiful. And scrape off the excess. And just, just repeat, repeat, repeat. All right, so this next part, I forgot on my first attempt, so I'm glad to implement it now. I need two tablespoons of black sesame seeds. Uh, this is a two pound bag of black sesame seeds. Nobody needs this much, but I bought this because I have something else in mind at the end of the video. We will reveal that later. For now, I just need to sprinkle some on top. Yeah, not too much, not too little. I'm just kind of winging it. Yeah, I think that's a nice, nice little look. Oven's at 400 degrees F. I gotta bake these for four to six minutes. Let's do four and a half minutes. Six minutes is too much. Four minutes is too little. Add that little extra 30 seconds. And yeah, this is all based on the experience I have. And by experience, I mean I'm not experienced. It's just by that first attempt, which was awful. <sighs> now while we have some time, I should introduce you to my molds. These are four and a half inch cornet molds. And I've already tried this out, so I know that they work. <laughs> uh, do I have way too many? Yes, 100%. They are rippling. You gotta move them to the opened oven door. Flip them while they're on the oven door. That will keep them hot and pliable. And flip. Here's the cornet mold with the tip facing towards me and the wide part facing away from me. I'm gonna have it around seven o'clock and we gotta roll it. But this is really, really hot. Like really hot. Ow. The seam side down on the pan. I've noticed that if you take too long, they start to crack. So you gotta act fast. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, we got a casualty, two casualties. Back in they go. And I gotta bake those for an additional three to four minutes until they're gold and brown. Uh, it's got a casualty here. So, if the color is uneven, which it is, I'm gonna lift these up and I'm gonna put them... That's hot. It's hot. I'm gonna stand the cornets up, like so. Back into the oven like this for a minute or so, so that the color, like, it kinda evens out, you know? Remove these gently. Whoa. That just came right off. Um, onto a paper towel. They're coming right off, my friends. We started off with six of these, we have three. So that's a 50% success rate. That grade has followed me around my entire life, hasn't it? <laughs> High school, I'm looking at you. I'm gonna have this tray in matte cool completely. I'm gonna clean it all up. I'm gonna try it again with the remaining batter. Hoping for big things the next turn. To the salmon tartare and this is actually going to be the very first time I've ever cooked or uncooked never not cooked uh, raw fish to eat at home like I'm going to consume this raw fish so I want to do this the best safest way possible in my own home I mean it's me we're talking here so I went to this Japanese grocery store that's not too far away from me picked up some sushi grade salmon and what is that? Some people say it's just a marketing ploy. That may be. But there's also something that's done to this that makes it kind of special, which is that it's flash frozen to a... Okay. So it's flash frozen to a negative 31 degree F temperature. And it's done so in this like super freezer. So it's something that I can't do at home. <laughs> no. Even at the Japanese grocery store I went to, there was the wild salmon and there was the sushi sashimi grade salmon. And I asked the guy, I was like, what, is it okay to eat the wild salmon raw? And he said, stick with this stuff. Now flash freezing it to that temperature is gonna get it down to a place where it's gonna be, well, you know, it's gonna help get rid of uh, all that bad stuff. Parasites, bacteria, pathogens, tapeworms, all that stuff that I don't want in my body right now. 
uh, it just, you know, it really just put a damper on the day. Anyway, that's my little spiel there. I always kind of wanted to know what that all was about. So now we know. In the cookbook, it has no mention of any of this. It just says, you know, use a salmon filet, preferably a belly. Yeah, I just wanted to play it safe, play it cool today, you know? I'm not a pro at this, although I play one on TV. <laughs> I definitely do not, I'm not a pro. Finally mince the salmon, do not use the food processor. Aww, if I was gonna use the food processor, it would damage the texture of the fish. So yeah, we're just gonna mince it up the old fashioned way. Finely mince, he says. I mean, this is fine, but I guess we could go finer. I'm not in the mood to be a cowboy today, so I want to add exactly what it says in the cookbook. So that's four ounces of finely minced up salmon, and that is kind of, uh, that's another ounce. Four moi, and I'll have it uh, after the program. We have a little bit of a shallot here, or as Gordon Ramsay would call it, a shallot. <laughs> that's what he says. What I'm doing now is just kind of paying a quick visit to Jamie's garden. Our fresh chives, they really came in this year. Quick wash, ought to do it. Okay, line them all up. And the ugly tips, not in my restaurant. Let's get mincing. Small bowl. So let's add the salmon into the bowl. Teaspoon and a half of finely minced up chives and a teaspoon and a half of finely minced up shallots. Three quarter teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. Now I picked up some of this. This is lemon infused olive oil. So when he says three quarter teaspoon of lemon oil, this is what he means. That's where my research led me. So three quarter teaspoon of that. Around half a teaspoon of salt. Now there's this part in the book where Thomas Keller like talks about the reasons why he would use black pepper, white pepper. For white pepper, he says to use it when you wanna use pepper but you don't wanna see the little little black specks in your food. So a uh, little pinch of that. I'm gonna just mix that together. And give it a taste. It's refreshing. <laughs> I love it. So I'm gonna cover this 30 minutes in the fridge, at least. So what I need is, I definitely do not need all of this, but this is minced up sweet red onion. I need a tablespoon worth. And I'm just gonna put it into a tiny little strainer and I gotta rinse it in cold water for several seconds. And then this goes on to paper towel to dry. I don't need all that, it's not extra. I haven't looked into why I'm supposed to wash that. I'm sure there's a great reason. One day I'll probably find out, probably when I release this video in the comments tell me, but for now, I'm just gonna do it because he says to do it. Uh, oh, shh. okay. I need around half a cup of the creme fraiche. That would be all of that. Sweet, why don't you put it on the cutting board while you're at it too. So let's whisk this up for the next 30 seconds to a minute until I've reached soft peaks. Fold in a tablespoon of the minced up red onion, around a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and freshly ground pepper to taste. So I got a quarter inch Piping bag, nozzle tip, thingamajig, got a piping bag. So with the onion creme fraiche, in it goes to my piping bag. Here's what I'm thinking in terms of uh, presentation. So I have some sort of dish here. I think that one looks nice for what I have in my head. Stay with me here, stay with me. I'm gonna take this two pound bag of black sesame seeds. I'm gonna put it to good use. I'm gonna pour, stay with me. I gotta say something right here. I didn't come up with this, I, I saw it somewhere. So I'm gonna find and source where I found that. I'm gonna link it in the description and give that person all the credit because I'm not smart enough to come up with a scheme like this. I gotta take my cone and if I just kinda... Booyah! Fill just the top one half of each cornet. Okay, half an inch, half an inch. Cool. Put that in there. Yeah, I mean, don't you love it when a plan comes together? Let's try that again. I, I think the onions are getting stuck in this tip here, so I think I'm gonna go tipless. Yeah, I'm gonna go tipless. The 
spoon, one and a half teaspoons of salmon tartare on top of the cream that's in the cones here. And I gotta mold it into a dome resembling a scoop of ice cream. Okay, cool. Get the first one in there. Oh dear, yeah. I love it. I feel like working with your hands is the best option here. Really get it into the shape that you desire. So I'm gonna bring over my little uh, Jamie's garden. And what do I need? Chive tips. Lay a chive tip against one side of the tartare to garnish. Do you have a photo reference for me? Oh, like upright. Okay, gotcha. How to... Oh, okay. Chive tips go on the very top. Just kind of find a place for them. Yes! Beautiful. Just stunning. I really think that's all I have to offer with this one. So, you know what? Order up! It's incredible. All right, shall we try another? What the hell, have one more. Mm. Mm. Stop at three? Yeah, stop at four. Let's say something about these cornets. You take a bite out of them, they're tender, they're soft, they kind of crumble in your mouth. They got a little buttery flavor to them. They're wonderful. And uh, the salmon tartare, I mean, <laughs> I'm still alive and kicking, so that was a success. And it was fantastic. The whole thing, I loved it. And I want more of it. You know what it has kind of a vibe to, uh, which I'm a big fan of, is smoked salmon cream cheese locks on a bagel. I love that kind of thing. And this is kind of like the fancier version of that. That's kind of what I was picking up. The question is, if you visit the restaurant, do you only get one of those? because one wasn't enough. I had four and I think that was plenty. Actually, I'm ready for what's next. Tasting menu, bring it to me. Oh, I gotta do the oyster thing. Welcome back to the after episode special where we are gonna find out who owns this oyster knife. It needs a new home. So yeah, remember in episode one of this series, I accidentally bought two of these things and I don't need this one. And I put the call out to you guys and asked who wants it? Turns out quite a few of you did, so. We're just gonna pick this at random. So I've never done this before. I'm just, you know, YouTube random comment picker. Apparently it's a website. So I just put my YouTube link in filter by a uh, keyword. Let's go with knife. So now we wait. 190 people said the word knife. All right, here we go. We're picking a winner. Tiny pine tree is the winner of this knife, providing that you live in the United States, because I don't know if I can ship this internationally. Hi, Jamie, I would love your oyster knife as a gift for my partner, since we are moving in together soon. Congratulations. Love the videos. It's something my partner and I have bonded over ever since they showed me your videos. Keep up the great work. It's all yours. Congratulations, tiny pine tree. Put an end to that one. This was Jamie and Chef Thomas Keller. I'll see you in another, another video. More sirens coming, so adios. Later, au revoir.